Hello and welcome to Health and Beauty Hacks. I'm your host, Mia Signs, and I'm excited to bring you this episode. My guest is Trudy Stoner, and she is also a self-love teacher coach. And so I love it when I have people in my industry on that is helping to break through everything. And so welcome, Trudy. It's lovely to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. It's always really fun to collaborate with you. It is fun. It is. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, well, actually the title of the show is Beauty from the Inside Out. And so a lot of people don't understand. I want to hear about your story too. (laughs) I'm so excited to share. A lot of people don't understand that when we work our self-love, it literally is beauty from the inside out. And I love that. I really am excited about our talk. Um, (laughs) Share a little bit with us, please, about you. I'm laughing because everyone, I love Trudy. And um, you know how life goes where you don't get to always see your friends. And so recently, we've been spending a lot of time catching up in life. And it's really beautiful. So I'm just so excited she's here. (laughs) It is beautiful because you're right. But it's like, you know, your true friends when you take a break because life happens Mm -hmm. and then you literally pick up and it feels like we just talked yesterday, you know, and it had been a couple of years and yes, the conversation was long because we had a lot of catching up to do, but it still felt so familiar. It was like, Mm -hmm. Oh Mia, it was very nice. I love it. It It's beautiful. Well, you've been on this amazing journey of love yourself and that's why you teach self love. And, and so share with us a little bit about what brought you to the point where you shifted your life and then you started um, teaching it. Yeah. Well, I found myself and we all, you know, if you are following me at all, we know that when we experience any kind of trauma, when we're younger, if we all create our stories and our beliefs around love based upon our experience when we're young. And so if, we're witnessing and experiencing something in the name of love that really has nothing to do with love, it leaves a mark. It takes time. We start making decisions as adults about love based on those beliefs and stories. So for the first 50 years of my life, I just was so dysfunctional around love. I had no idea what it really was. And within an eight week time frame, I lost, um, by, from a breakup, I lost a man who I thought was finally healthy love and <clears throat> the one, and it wasn't so for him. And I experienced this, like, um, this very transformational breakup. But then within two weeks of that, I lost my mom. She passed. Mm-hmm. So I was in this intense, deep grieving period and sort of lashing out at the idea of like, love hurts. It hurts so much. And why do we put our hearts out there and, and take this risk when we're just going to end up in pain, so much pain and heartbreak is no joke. Right. (laughs) And, and what happened to me was really transformative because I literally had an experience of love, like energetic love. I was on my staircase and I, I had just been leaning into the grief, leaning into what it felt like instead of putting little band-aids on it and trying to just, you know, do things to cover up the pain. I, I decided this time I was going to lean into it. And I just had this experience on my staircase where I literally saw like this beautiful shimmering white light coming back down through my head, almost like raindrops. And I felt completely encompassed in love from the inside, from the outside, just wrapping me up. And I realized in that moment that I absolutely am love, Mm -hmm. that it wasn't something that I was getting from the outside ever. It always was within me. And it just sort of cracked me wide open to say, oh my gosh, we need to like enlighten the world. We need to teach about what love really is, that it's a noun and a verb. We show up and we, we do things, right? Action items that are loving, but we are love and it's how we be. And that's what did it for me. It was like right in that moment, I knew that's what I was supposed to do. That's beautiful. It's so interesting how these shifts, like you said, just in that moment, you knew Mm -hmm. how those shifts come. When we, well, when you're struggling, then of course we're focused on the other side. Yeah. But um, when we're not, we still have those little shifts, right? 
that are transformational, but spotting them, giving mm -hmm. gratitude and moving forward with it, that's the key. That's also a, a hot hack here, literally, is to be able to spot your transitional space, your growth space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just, and I think you just said it with gratitude, right? And just being like, when we open up, so many times when we're in pain, we're praying for answers, we're, we're calling out, we're asking for help, but almost in our desperation, we don't realize that we create our own resistance, right? And when we truly surrender, when we really lean into it, when we open up and we're just like, I give, that's when we open up and spirit can just like arrive. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're just really broken wide open and we're ready to receive it. But in our daily lives, by staying connected to gratitude and connected to that energy of love, that feeling of, um, you know, what does it feel like to truly love another? Well, what does that feel like to truly love myself? When we stay in that energy, it, you're right. It's like it comes constantly and, and it's like this flow continuously and you can actually train yourself to notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you're the only other person I've ever heard say that besides <laughs> me. <laughs> it is about a training it yeah. is on everything, even to stop and just say, how am I feeling in this moment? And oh, I like yeah. what it feels like, right? Most people don't even, that concept is like, what? That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Or to stop and say, well, what am I thinking? Like, where is, where am I mentally right now? Right? Because we are spiritual beings having a human experience, but in our humanness, we're thinking thoughts all day long that are creating our experience and our feelings. And we don't stop. We think that everything that's happening to us is out there and we don't like when we ground in and we stop and we take a feeling and then we go, what was I just thinking? Where's my mindset today? What's my mood today? Where are my thoughts today? And I'm telling you every single time you're going to find that you're low vibration when you're feeling that way. And there are tools, like you said, practice and training, and there's tools for raising your vibration and your awareness. And you can just start to notice and then like you'll learn your body so well that you can check in in an instant and you can do like a full body scan and go energetically, what do I think I'm at? And I can pretty much tell you, you know, it's like, oh, I think I'm probably at like a 175 <laughs> or, or no, I'm feeling really good. I'm probably close to like 400 or maybe I'm feeling like that euphoria of love, which is like a 740 or something, but there's those measurements of vibration and you can literally train yourself to start to notice where you are. That's beautiful. I think I want uh, a little bit more info on that for people. Um, we can either, do you want to talk about that scale that you're talking about, how they can find it? Sure. So when I talk about the um, calibration of these these frequencies or this vibration i'm referring to like the law of consciousness and it's a book by dr david hawken and you can actually the map of consciousness and you can actually look at that and go online and there's a scale and it shows where this energy has been calibrated so very very low energy would be like i think shame is like 20 mm -hmm. and it goes all the way up and um, like I was referring to with love, with joy, it's at different vibrations. So you can check that out and learn more about it. Very cool. Very, very cool. So let's talk about um, mindset, about beauty coming from the inside out. So I, I think... want to raise my hand. I know. I <laughs> Yeah, yes, you do. I'm like, tell me, tell me. What no, you I'm, like, I'm just so excited about this. I'm like, I want to play too. Yeah. yeah. And do play. Cause Mia, I think that you and I, when we do this kind of like back and forth banter, it's like the best, the, the juiciest nuggets, right. Yeah. Come out of it. It's amazing. Yeah. So for me, the mindset is an attitude shift, right? It's like what we believe, whether we believe we can or we can't, we're right. You know, we've all heard that. Yeah. And I watched my mom at like 50. It was like a flips 
a, a switch flipped and she just, it was like a downhill slide. Just, you know, with health, with just weight gain, with just not feeling good about herself. It was like she kind of gave up because, you know, and for years and years, didn't we do like um, turning 50 was, sorry, I have a fly that's attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we turned 50, it was like the black balloons. Mm -hmm. right. Oh my gosh, right? The black balloons. And I'm glad we're on a different time frame now. Oh my <laughs> gosh, so am I. So am I. But when you what you believe, like mm -hmm. that's what's gonna happen, that's what's gonna manifest, right? And so I think we're at a completely different place where women recognize that like in their 50s and 60s, they they can actually start to really improve with age and really anchor into who they really are. And you see this beauty resonating from the inside out. And all of a sudden we're starting to self nurture. We're starting to self love. We're starting to fall in love with ourselves. We're starting to get excited about life because it's our season and we can really come into the richness of who we are when we embrace it. Like it's no coincidence that when you look at women that are age 50, 60 and into their seventies and even eighties, you see these vibrant, gorgeous women Whereas if you go back 50 years and you were looking at women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, it was a rarity to find a woman that was really glowy and vibrant. Mm -hmm. Now it's like moving towards the norm and it's amazing. I love that. Yeah, I love that. When I was young, um, there was a uh, book, a metaphysical book that we used to study and read. And in there, there was a story of this woman who waited in her wedding dress for her lover to come and marry her. She was in her like twenties or very early twenties. And when she died as an old woman, she, everything, she still looked very young and she was still waiting for her lover. So she didn't really age. That was uh, one of the first signs that I picked up at a very young age that we are what we create even age wise. Yeah. And so it's really brilliant that um, you've put it in this framework. When I talk about mindset, I'm, I'm much meaner. <laughs> I'm like, what are you thinking? Set your alarm clock three times a day. Stop. What are you thinking? Change that mindset. <laughs> but you're right. It starts at a very young age. It starts from the moment we're born. What are we thinking? What are we believing? Mm -hmm. And, but the, the good news is that we can change that at any moment, right? Like we don't have to fall into the belief that, well, this is sort of my destiny because that's not true. We can change that in a moment, right? Of insight when we wake up and, and, you know, some of the tools, just like actual hardcore steps that you can take to change your mindset and to fall in love with you. I was really thinking about this before this call because you and I touched on this when we were just having a conversation about a week ago about how it does feel good to put on your makeup and do your hair and do your nails and to buy pretty clothes, but that's not the real essence of the beauty that we're talking about. Right, right. We're talking and, about, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about that deep inner glow. Yeah, yeah. And it changes even the way we look because we have less stress lines when you work through your emotional baggage, you have less stress lines, you have less everything that's, you know, that oftentimes people sleep and make weird faces, you know, because they're stressed out and our face takes on that look. So literally that's my beauty hack, baby. <laughs> yeah, so huge beauty hacks, you're right. So attitude, right, yeah. vibration, that's a glowy energy. It, you're exactly right because physiologically it's going to show on the outside as within. We're having a crappy day and you're right. We're going to wake up. We're going to have just, you just have those days. You have dark circles. You just, but then you have those days when you're more vibrant and then energetically think about what we do when we attract people. I mean, we've all had days where we're in a funky bad mood and we go to the grocery store and it's almost like we have a repellent on. People give us a wide berth. They're not looking at us. You don't get eye contact. Nobody's talking to you. And it kind of like almost makes that mood worse, right? It's like um, you're looking for validation. Yeah, the world does suck today versus days when we feel great. 
we feel great. And you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden people are looking you in the eye. They're complimenting your outfit. They're saying how nice your hair looks. You're just like this magnet for attention. And it's all coming from within. Not a thing has changed on the outside, right? But it's all coming from within. And, and I love that. And I think it starts, and I think that you, we're going to echo each other. It starts with deeply loving yourself, falling in love with you. That's what brings out our confidence mm -hmm. and this ability to honor ourselves even, right? Yes. Confidence is, is that space we can go anywhere and know we belong. Why? Because we know ourselves. We're in yeah. touch with ourselves. We're not fearful. We're not scared. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a hack. Yay. So grab a piece of paper and I want you to just like reflect, like stop and really, really get into that space in your head of what it feels like to fall in love with someone. What does that feel like when you meet somebody and you get that very first chemical hit of attraction where you're like, huh, that's interesting. You know, um, for those of you that are married, think about when you first met your spouse. For those that are single, think about when you first met like your last lover or your last person. And we do certain things when we start to fall for somebody, right? And first there's sort of that chemical attraction. Mm -hmm. And then it's the way that we look at them. Once we decide that they might be a candidate, then we start to do certain things. We start to look at them from fresh eyes of um, potential. Mm -hmm. But we actively seek out what we like in them and what we want to like in them. We look for the good in them and that's both physically and like not physically. So um, we sometimes, even to our detriment, we'll fall in love with somebody's potential. We see the good in them that they can't even see in them, right? We are, but the point is we are actively on a crusade to seek the best in them. Oh, beautiful eyes. God, lovely cheekbones. Oh, he's got a straw jawline or she's got beautiful lips whatever it is we're looking for those things to fall in love with and we don't do the same thing for us so i want you to the hack is that to really think about all those things i made a list it's like um we we look at them we look for potential we look for the good we look for what excites us about them we look for all sorts of wonderful things. And then the other thing we do is when we start to get into relationship, right? And we're wanting this person to fall in love with us. So what do we do? We anticipate their needs. We learn their love language. We do acts of service for them. And we even try and express it in the way that we touch them, in the way that we are voiced, the way that we communicate with them. Everything about us comes from a loving place and a soft place and a place of invitation like because we want them to love us. But when you really stop and look at how you treat yourself, ask yourself if you treat yourself the same way you would if this was someone new you were falling in love with. That's my hack because we don't usually look in the mirror and go, oh my God, you have beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. If we touched ourselves the way we touch our lovers, if we, you know, I mean, how many, we jump in the shower, we spend three minutes, we wash our hair, we're crazy. We, we are like, we would never touch our child in the same way. We would never touch our loved one in the same way. We just aren't gentle with ourselves. We're in a rush, we're in a hurry. And too many times we default to what's wrong instead of what's right. Mm -hmm. And if we spoke to people that we wanted to love us the way we speak to ourselves, <laughs> it wouldn't work. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's interesting um, on this health journey that I've been on the last several months, I've um, take care of myself differently yeah. than I ever have before in my entire life. I mean, I've now have this habit of it, you know? Yes. And what does um, that look like for you? I'm curious because I, <laughs> I see it in you and I feel it in your energy, but I'd love to hear like, what does that look like for you? Well, it's funny because I've always done the meditating and the spiritual and the, and the love work that way, but now I'm doing more of the body love work that, um, you know, I, I really had to, I didn't want to lose a breast. I had to, 
you know, I was crying. I don't want to never be looked at or touched again. You know, I want my breast. And so I had to dig deeper. But what I've found that I've changed is, um, you know, even the way that I take care of my hair, the way that I scrub my body, I enjoy using, <laughs> a, you know, the, the brushes that, you know, get the dry skin off, you know, the circulation. I actually use that almost every single day, both wet and dry, uh, wet after I've done myself, just so that I'm, I don't know why, but I just feel really beautiful. And then I put on beautiful moisturizers and, you know, things that I haven't done before. I take baths with Epsom salt for the magnesium, specifically for my health, you know, things like that. My routine has just shifted and changed both in and out of the shower, I put on my life wave patches, you know, for whether it's night or the morning, it's just, it's different now. Everything is about me. And we find as women, especially, and men who, if you're watching this part, you know, you'll understand we find as women being caretakers that we don't care for ourselves. So when we actually focus and stop and say, wow, how does that feel? How does that music that I'm listening to in the shower feels? We want to know what we feel like, right? And we're not connected. And so that's the important part is the self-connection is so much deeper and greater. Mm -hmm. You know, when you said about falling in love with a lover, I found that as we turn ourselves into that love, right? Mm -hmm. We want to do more. And when we do find someone new, we always beef up our routine, no matter what, <laughs> whatever it is, right? It's like, oh yes, I have to, you know, shave every day and I have to do this every day. <laughs> yes. And so it's, it's, it's simply the same type of thing, but doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, because when we talk about self-love so many times, there's lists, you know, of things you can do to love yourself. And not that those aren't important, they are, but we miss that really critical component of really deeply caring for ourselves. Yeah. And and I, oh, go, go. No, I was just going to say movement as well is a foundational piece that works our mind and gets our body and our interior self-love part working together. So many people as they age, don't push themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying push yourself to hurt yourself. I'm saying push yourself to grow yourself. Yes, and stretch. See where you, and see where you end up. We find that with exercise, there is less disease and disease yeah. in the body. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The release of endorphins, right? All of that. Yeah. And I've heard, we've all heard, right? Like for me, it was more of an emotional crisis that cracked me wide open. Um, I was just dealing with heartbreak and it just felt like I was hitting this wall of what I'm doing isn't working. Like, right. I'm not attracting what I want into my life. I'm just was so sad and it was just so much grief, but it, everybody's journey is different. Like you were just describing with the, the really falling in love with your body because there was a risk of losing a part of it. And so whatever it is, it's our personal journey. And we oftentimes it's like some sort of personal crisis. Mm -hmm. That's like this, it facilitates like a breaking open and this awareness that suddenly, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. like you view your body in a totally different way. No longer are we so critical and so harsh, but it's more loving and appreciation just genuine, like, oh my gosh, I'm so fortunate to have these breasts. I'm so fortunate to have like, you know, I could go on, you know, the list and list right. because, but when we're at risk of losing something. And for me, it was this idea that said uh, everything I was up against with love was being challenged. Mm -hmm. And for you, it was a physical thing. And it was like, what do I have to do on both counts? We had to dig deeper dig deeper and love ourselves. And really at the end of the day, that is the thing that's going to heal us mm -hmm. emotionally, physically. It's that deep connection. Yeah. Powerful. Very, very powerful. Yeah. And this show is running really fast. <laughs> we just <laughs> blew through that almost 30 minutes here. Amazing. Uh, wow. Um, you have a free gift for everybody. Would you like to share it? Sure. I would. So 
you know, as coaches, we all go through different things and I've done lots and lots of different freebies, but at the end of the day, the way that I found that I can serve the most is just conversation. So my free gift is a conversation. Let's just get on the phone and have a deep conversation about love. And there is really no agenda. You will be my agenda. It's whatever is coming up for you when it comes to love. And we can go deep and we can explore what that means for you and how you can like really anchor into that. And I had a a logo designed years ago and it's called Anchored in Love. And that really became my mantra is how do you live life anchored in love? So if you would like to find out just uh, my, the link is to my schedule, hop on my calendar and we'll explore that further. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And what would you like to leave us with? We've, we've talked um, about several things. We got all excited and I just want to make sure that what's on your heart that you want to share with everybody was said. I think more than anything, it's just give yourself permission. Loving yourself is not selfish. Mm -hmm. It is not selfish. And just set that that thought, like don't even set it aside, just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of it. Like the most loving, amazing thing that you can do for everybody else on the planet, literally, is to fall deeply in love with yourself. And give yourself permission to lean into it. And... um, do what Mia said, set an alarm every day, set an alarm and three times a day, go into the mirror and just like, look for the things that are beautiful about you and speak love to yourself. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to have you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us. And we'll see you in another episode of Health and Beauty Hacks.